All right, good morning, everybody. Hopefully, we don't have too many sleepies in the room. Even if you are, you want to do your best to pay attention because you are responsible for passing the Socrative quiz, right? Today, we're talking about Lesson 29, multiplying by multiples of 10 and 100. So let's take a look at what we got going on, a little bit of review right now. What we've stated, multiples of numbers are the answers we get when we multiply by that number. For example, the multiples of 10 are just 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, etc., right? So any multiple of 10 is just that number written with one extra zero, and we've been trying to get to that on mental math, right? 3 times 10, it just has an extra 0, 30, right? 4 times 10, so write down a 4, add an extra 0. 11 times 10, just think of 11 and add an extra 0 to turn it into 110. Or 73 times 10, just visualize 73 with one extra 0 and you end up with 730. Any multiple of 100 is just that number written with two extra zeros. Same thing, 3 times 100, 3 with two zeros on the end for 300. 4 with two zeros on the end for 400. 11 times 100, picture in your mind 11 with two zeros on the end, making it 1,100. Or 73 times 100, Picture in your mind 73 with two extra zeros, making 7,300. Or you can still call it 7,300. And normally, we set up vertical multiplying problems lined up by the ones column, otherwise known as lining them up on the right, correct? 43 times 50. We've been working in that since second grade, nice, neat, and straight. But here's a little shortcut for you. But if you're multiplying by a multiple of 10 or 100 or any number that ends with zeros, you can do what we call in fifth grade, dangle the zero past the ones column on the right. So you will multiply starting with the digit in the ones column still and just bring the zero straight down into the product. And hopefully you remember the product is the answer when you multiply. So here is the old fashioned way we line everything up on the ones column. But hey, 50 is a multiple of 10. It ends in a zero, correct? So I can still set this problem up vertically only when I write 50, dangle the zero past the digit in the ones column. And you're really not even going to worry about that zero until the very end. We can start off going 5 times 3. 5 times 3 is 15. So I'm going to write down my 5. I want to carry my 1. Then I'm going to go 5 times 4 is 20. Add the one more for 21, but I'm not done yet because I set this up as a dangle the zero. So now I bring my zero straight down and I end up with 2,150. Not too tough, even if we are pretty sleepy. Let's try a few more. So remember, if we were doing 63 times 40, I'm going to dangle the zero past the ones column. I'm not even going to worry about them. I'm going to start right here with 4 times 3. 4 times 3 is 12, so I'll write down my 2. I'm going to carry my 1. Then I'm going to go 4 times 6 is 24, plus 1 more is 25. And when I'm all done, I'm going to worry about my zero. I'm going to bring that guy straight down and he's 2,520. Let's try this one a little bigger with a multiple of 100. 34 times 200. Well, you'll still set them up 34 times 2 and dangle two zeros this time. So let's go 2 times 4, 
Hey, that's eight. Two times three, that should be six. And we have two additional zeros, so I'm gonna bring them both down for 6,800. Check out this one. People sometimes get thrown, they'll go, but I can't dangle the 48. No, you can't, but you should be aware of the commutative property. If you had 50 in the front, you can go and move that to the back, right? Instead of 50 times 48, you got to think of them as 48 times 50. Because once it's 48 times 50, you're free to dangle the zero at the bottom. But it does have to be at the bottom. So now I'm free to start off. 5 times 8 is 40. I'm going to write down my zero. I'm going to carry my 4. And now I'm going to look at 5 times 4 is 20, plus 4 more. Hey, we got 24, correct? Did I forget anything? That's the trickiest part about this operation. you got to remember to bring down the zero or the zeros that you're dangling. Check out this one with a money problem. $1.25 times 600. Any number that has a multiple of zero involved, you can always dangle the zeros, right? Even if it's a money problem. I'm going to start here with 6 times 5. Okay, that's 30. Then I'm going to move on to 6 times 2 is 12, plus 3 more. Okay, that's 15. Lastly, I can go 6 times 1 is 6, plus 1 more. That's 7. We have two zeros we're dangling. Let's bring them two straight down. And because it's a money problem, dollar sign and decimal point. Don't be forgetting your decimal point. If you put a, just a dollar sign there, there's a big difference between $750 and $75,000, right? Okay, let's try one that's set up as a story problem, but the concept is the same. It's all about dangle the zero today. Last season, LeBron averaged an average of 60 minutes per game. And he played in 67 games, the old number of groups times the number in each group. 67 is the number of groups. 60 is the number in each group. So which number do you want on top? If it's all about dangling the zero, I think I'm going to put the 60 on top. I'm going to set this up like this and dangle the zero on the 60 because I just don't want to work that hard this morning. 6 times 7 is 42, so I'm going to write down my 2. I'm going to carry my 4. 6 times 6 is 36, plus 4 more. That's 40. And my last step is to go and dangle my zero and bring it straight down. 4,020 minutes was the total number LeBron played that season. Okay, that should be it. You are definitely going to want a piece of paper and a pencil for your Socrative quiz. And good luck.